QR's got no one to blame except themselves. Paul Pluter is the whistleblower behind documents which revealed the extent of the driver shortage. It's the executives at QR who should be ashamed of themselves. They should get out of their statesman, get out of their 5 Series BMW and take the train. Since the data was collected, the Queensland Rail Saga has claimed a transport minister and a CEO. Now a new minister says she's determined to fix it. We know that this is not going to be fixed overnight. It's not going to be fixed in a couple of months. Max Futcher, 7 News. Good evening. Queensland Rail and the State Government won't say if heads will roll over the significant staff shortages continuing to impact the rail network across the southeast. Commuters are still being hit hard with hundreds of services to be cancelled in the coming weeks. Pippa Sheehan joins us now. Pippa, is there any relief in sight for passengers? Well, Georgie, no, there is. And across the next two weeks, more than 400 services are set to be cancelled as Queensland Rail continues to deal with this massive issue. Now, this means commuters could face waits of up to half an hour on their way to and from work each day. There's more than 100 new staff who've been announced, including 100 train drivers and 100 guards who will come onto the network. They, however, will need to be trained in the meantime, though no one's saying whose job is on the line over this debacle back on track but not entirely ready to go. I, I know that we have got this wrong. I can't explain why we've got this wrong, but we will be looking at that in the very short term. Starting tomorrow, more than 400 train services will be cancelled across the next two weeks due to a lack of adequately trained staff. We are incredibly angry about what has happened here, but the priority must, must be on making sure that services are provided. The government is livid with plans to appoint someone to investigate what went wrong. To do a forensic examination, I want to know who knew what when, why it was not passed up the chain. As the issue played out across the weekend in the southeast, the Minister for Transport, Sterling Hinchliffe, attended the Gold Coast 600. The opposition says that's simply unacceptable. This minister should be sacked, the Premier should be strong and get rid of this minister today. When this issue did not happen overnight, uh, he is the Transport Minister, it is his job to make sure trains run on time. Sterling Hinchliffe says he was supporting the event as Minister for the Commonwealth Games. I was doing that at the same time as keeping in close contact mm. with the CEO, keeping in close contact uh, with uh, uh, our team. Queensland Rail says it underestimated the amount of training staff would need to familiarise themselves with the new Redcliffe Peninsula line. Commuters venting their frustrations. I got to the station early considering that there might be hold up. I don't know how they could possibly have let it happen. They've had plenty of time to get more drivers on. I don't know why they couldn't get them. Now, there are a number of drivers who are in training at the moment. Queensland Rail estimates around four or five of them will complete their competencies each day, which will help, though this new timetable will be only reassessed in two weeks' time. They haven't ruled out more changes. Staff say it's possible these headaches for commuters could last months and say the best thing for anyone to do is to check the TransLink website every day. Mm, it's not good, is it? Thank you, Pippa Sheehan, with that update. As you've heard, the Transport Minister is also under pressure to quit. Sterling Hinchliffe joined me in the studio a short time ago. Well, Minister, you've just announced your third timetable change in a fortnight. It includes 333 fewer services Monday to Friday. Is it time for you to go? I'm 100% focused on uh, delivering this reliable and sustainable timetable for the commuters of South East Queensland. That's what the uh, Premier has asked me to do and uh, uh, I'm remaining focused on that. Well, let me run you through the litany of errors and delays that have taken place with Queensland Rail. You have a shortage of more than 100 drivers. That was flagged in a report as far back as January, although you weren't aware of it. It takes a year to train drivers. A huge overtime bill of more than $500,000 a fortnight. You've had the three timetable changes, hundreds of cancelled trains and service disruptions. It took a week for the Queensland Rail CEO, Helen Gluer, and Chairman Michael Klug to resign after they admitted planning for the new Redcliffe line had been seriously flawed and you learnt of the crisis from Twitter. What would it take for you to resign? Uh, I'm 
focused on delivering the services that South East Queensland uh, commuters expect and rely upon. That's what the Premier has tasked me to do. Uh, I'm making sure that we'll see on Monday uh, a reliable and sustainable uh, timetable delivered. Uh, frankly, QR failed to deliver the right uh, advice and planning. Um, I've worked very closely with the new uh, acting CEO of Queensland Rail and we've got in place this great timetable that'll deliver, sure, a lesser level of service, but it'll do it in a way that will supply reliability and won't break the back of our workforce. We know that there's an overtime bill of more than $500,000 a fortnight. You had to pay out the former CEO, Helen Gluer, $158,000. What's the bottom line here? Well, th these are costs that are coming from uh, QR. Queensland Rail, uh, as a statutory authority, is covering these costs, is dealing with these costs. Um, this is making an impact to some extent uh, on the uh, dividend that's, that'll, that would come to government otherwise. But our focus is on delivering services. Uh, QR is there to deliver services to Queenslanders, to South East Queenslanders in particular, in terms of our city train network, and that's what we will do. But one of the other things that you want to do with the driver training is you want to fast track that training. Will safety be compromised as a result of that? And can you give an assurance that it won't be? Uh, uh, absolutely, in all measures in relation to our rail network, safety comes first. Safety is our first priority. Safety is the reason why we've had this painful situation in the last couple of weeks where QR has had to cancel services because of a lack of train crew. Um, there were potentially drivers who could do it, but under the rules, they're not permitted to do that work. Um, Safety will always come first. It is always my highest priority, and I know that, that uh, the commuter public expect that and understand that. Minister, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. The train derailed around 4.30 yesterday afternoon at the Wolkaraka Maintenance Centre. The Transport Minister denies the incident was caused by the train. Rather, it was a shunter transporting the carriage at the time. It's very important that we understand exactly what happened here uh, so that the public can have full confidence. The opposition leader is not convinced the state government can resolve Queensland Rail's ongoing problems, saying 24,000 rail services have already been axed. And that means more congestion on our roads, it means fewer opportunities for public transport passengers to be able to get to work, to be able to get home, to be able to get where they need to go. The contract for the fleet of Indian-built trains has been plagued by controversy. This adds to a long list of problems uncovered during testing, including issues with braking, ventilation and driver visibility. It's one of 15 new trains meant to have rolled out almost 12 months ago. The state government has launched a full investigation into the derailment. The investigation that will be undertaken by the National Rail Safety Regulator, which is an independent body, will be of course made public to the people of Queensland. It's still not known whether the trains will be on track in time for the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Chloe Wilshire, QT News. It's the long-awaited line lingering and still in limbo. Well, when you've been waiting over 100 years, it's a little bit annoying. Queensland Rail now says it warned the Department of Transport the signalling system chosen for the rail link wasn't the best for the job, ranking it lower than the others being considered. Queensland Rail says its engineers helped evaluate the signalling system in April 2014. The Newman government awarded the tender for the system just two months later. Last week, the opening of the rail link was postponed. Queensland Rail says it reiterated its concerns with the technology, but was advised that the system was significantly cheaper. The laying of the rail line, the ballast and the tracks, uh, and uh, the signalling system commenced after the change of government in January 2015. The opposition leader refusing to reveal if he'd even spoken with the former transport minister. Uh, have you spoken to Scott Emerson? I speak to Scott Emerson on many things all the time. Specifically about the Morton Bay Rail? Oh, well, I'm not going to go into all of my discussions with my shadow cabinet. Have you spoken to Scott Emerson about it? It is a yes or no answer. Well, I've spoken to Scott Emerson about many things. I'm not uh, engaging in a blame game. I've asked for an independent audit. An Auditor to General's report released in 2015 revealed there could have been $7 million saved, but 
at what cost. I mean, uh, the government was quite correct in putting it in hold. They didn't have a choice. The Transport Minister will announce in the coming days who will run an independent audit to establish just who's at fault for installing the bungled signalling system here at Petrie Station. There's now no commitment to a finish date. All the things take time, I suppose, yeah. Zara Ratu, 9 News. <laughs> The Transport Minister has conceded he found out about South East Queensland's train crisis from social media. The director of his department, who's now in charge of Queensland Rail, also says he wasn't warned of an impending driver shortage. His state political reporter George Roberts. The rail debacle is still dominating daily politics. Only one job they're committed to keeping, and that is the Transport Minister's job. Get rid of him. First we had trains without seats, then trains that couldn't go in tunnels. Now we've got tunnels with Thank no you, trains. Thank you, Leader Opposition. Now Time to allowing the opposition the chance to flush out some revelations. Was it Twitter or Facebook that advised you of the rail crisis? It was uh, through uh, uh, Twitter uh, that I noticed uh, that through the trends like so But he blames the former management for keeping the risk of driver shortages secret. The answers I, would I was given by Queensland Rail proved to be wrong. And what's happened? The CEO, gone. The chair, gone. His department chief wasn't told either. No, because with a heart, I would have remembered. If I had not been misled in the nature of briefs that I have received, I believe absolutely things could have been very different. Colleagues are protecting the battle-weary minister. I support him 100% as, as I know the entire cabinet does. Absolutely. Uh, Sterling Hinchliffe is working very hard. While the key Catter Party MPs think city folk could do with some perspective. Because for nine days, Telstra services have been out in the Gulf. So for our entire region for nine days without phone. You imagine if Brisbane was without phones for nine days. The man brought in for damage control disagrees with the labels. And we're using the word crisis, debacle, use the word schmozzle. Actually, the train service is, is not that bad. It takes a year to train a driver and 100 more are needed. So when will full services be guaranteed? I always worry when people use guarantee. I can guarantee I'll be working my socks off to make sure this is all right. That's a lot of socks. George Roberts, ABC News, Brisbane. <laughs> It's simply not good enough. Those are the words the Premier has used once again to describe Queensland Rail. Commuters were left stranded this morning as a raft of problems paralysed the network. It was so bad, passengers are getting their money back. A costly apology after a Thursday morning that was nothing short of a train wreck. Those customers who, are, um, who have travelled on the Queensland Rail network uh, from first service this morning through to midday uh, will have uh, their... Um, uh, their fares refunded. With yet another Queensland rail train fail. Passengers from the Gold Coast to Redcliffe faced hour-long delays and cancellations. I was trying to get to the city but everything was shut down and that's why I had to get an Uber all the way here. Yeah, it was really annoying. I was 45 minutes late for work on my first uh, shift at the airport. I'm advised that it is uh, nothing to do with train drivers. It is track maintenance issues. It started before sunrise with a welding problem at Yeronga. A train breakdown between Currabi and Trinder Park then compounded the headache before storm damage caused signalling failures at South Brisbane and Dutton Park. Now these are very rare events uh, for our network. The Premier is furious commuters weren't told what was happening. They should have been more forthcoming with their explanation to commuters this morning and frankly it's not good enough. An increasingly common criticism from the Premier, this was her in October. It's not good enough. It's simply not good enough. Queensland Rail and Stirling Hinchliffe are taking commuters for mugs and commuters are paying the price for a government that just can't get it right. Then there was this bizarre tweet. A laughing emoticon posted around lunchtime on the official Queensland Rail account. It's under investigation. All the issues uh, that occurred this morning have been fully remediated uh, and the network is um, performing as we'd expect. Meaning hopefully a smooth ride home. The highly anticipated report into Queensland Rail's timetabling disaster will be handed to the Palaszczuk government tomorrow. But the Premier won't have a chance to meet author Philip Strawn until Friday when she returns from governing in central Queensland. Tegan George reports. 
It's being sold as a way to revitalise Rockhampton, the government to build an apartment complex to create jobs. Around 40 jobs will be created during this revitalisation project. But there could be a few people without a job later this week. The government will receive tomorrow the final report into Queensland Rail's colossal stuff-up over driver shortages. Philip Strawn uh, wants to personally discuss his report with me when I'm back in Brisbane on Friday afternoon. Three senior executives have already fallen on their swords. The opposition wants the Premier to release the inquiry's findings tomorrow. Oh, we're not in the age of carrier pigeons. We have telephone, we have Skype. Why do we have to wait another week to see the results of the Strawn inquiry? We will be uh, working on that report over the weekend. It will go to Cabinet on Monday and on Monday the report will be publicly released uh, as, as well as the government's response. As bad luck would have it, there were hour-long delays on the trouble-prone Redcliffe Peninsula line this morning, shut down to fix a communication problem. Delay when I don't, I don't think, I don't think will be, is, is not good. Yes, I've felt very disruptive this morning. I felt like this could occur any time on any heavy rail system anywhere in the world. The much-touted Cross River Rail is also giving the government grief. It's fallen behind schedule and is still billions short in funding. We're ready to go. We need Malcolm Turnbull to come on board. Major works are meant to start in April 2018. And Tegan joins us from Rockhampton. Tegan, the Premier is spending the week in central Queensland. Georgie, usually after these community cabinet events, we see everyone pack up and leave by tomorrow morning. But with the state election tipped for later this year, the Premier and her ministers are obviously very keen to speak with as many stakeholders as they can, especially those who may be thinking about switching over to One Nation. So that's what they're going to be doing here this evening in the building behind me, which conveniently or coincidentally is an old railway station. The Premier is going to be spending the next couple couple of days here in Rockhampton and we're told she's going to be making a major announcement. She'll then head on to Gladstone before returning to Brisbane where she's going to have to decide if more heads will roll over the QR fiasco. Thank you Tegan George live there in Rockhampton. There's more bad news tonight for Queensland Rail. Max Futcher, customer satisfaction is on the slide. Yes, Sharon, the new figures show the so-called rail fail is hurting QR at the turnstiles. Seven News has also conducted a right to information investigation. We wanted to know if any safety issues had unfolded in the lead up to the timetable debacle. Well, investigations from the past 12 months are still active, so couldn't be released. But here are some major incidents that came before that. Sometimes things go wrong. A derailment near Julia Creek 14 months ago. Three crew injured, sulfuric acid spilled, a two kilometre exclusion zone. This was caused by flooding and it's just one Queensland rail investigation recently completed, now released under right to information. Others include a collision in Manly in 2015 when not all wagon handbrakes were applied. A derailment at Glen Geddes in 2014 due to a mechanical failure and a collision between two trains at Mount Surprise in the same year. All this, as new figures show customer satisfaction in Queensland Rail, is in decline. This is the worst result we have ever seen in Queensland history. People have given up in believing in public transport. Eleven key indicators like reliability, information and affordability were all down. It is clearly understandable that at the height of the timetable debacle late last year, consumers did record significant dissatisfaction. QR's got no one to blame except themselves. Paul Pluter is the whistleblower behind documents which revealed the extent of the driver shortage. It's the executives at QR who should be ashamed of themselves. They should get out of their statesman, get out of their 5 Series BMW and take the train. Since the data was collected, the Queensland Rail Saga has claimed a transport minister and a CEO. Now a new minister says she's determined to fix it. We know that this is not going to be fixed overnight. It's not going to be fixed in a couple of months. Max Futcher, 7 News. To Joel Dry now. Joel, the blame game's begun over the derailment of one of our new trains. 
Andrew, the train in question isn't in service. The government hasn't even taken delivery of it yet, but its derailment is causing them a PR nightmare. The opposition has been pretty quick to cash in on the accident and used it as means to attack the government over the rail fail. But Labor is very quick to counter that this mess over the new train rollout has been left to them by the LNP. The proposed pride of the fleet, indicative of a project that's off the rails. I heard a bang, then I seen that um, the yellow carriage thing come off the track and a guy rolled out of it. I thought he was dead. The new generation rolling stock train derailed and damaged, along with the reputation of the government, according to the opposition. Labor has botched the delivery of these new trains, and that's adding to the failure on the rail network. Fifteen of the ordered 75 new trains are in Queensland, but none are in service due to ongoing faults. Among them, they're not accessible to disabled people. The government forced to apply to the Human Rights Commission for exemption to allow them to run. This project is four and a half billion dollars worth. Why were these trains built non-compliant? The question of who's to blame for the dodgy design is hotly debated. These trains were trains that were ordered by the LNP government in the last term. Next generation rolling stock was ordered on the basis of the advice from the department. That obviously means right back in the beginning the design was botched. The train itself can't be moved until the initial investigation, which you can see is now underway, is completed. When it is time to move, equipment will be brought down the line and then hydraulic lifts will put the whole train back onto the track. It will then be shunted towards the maintenance yard for further investigation. Meaning more delays before Queenslanders are all aboard. These new generation rolling stock trains are needed urgently. At this stage, it could be many months yet before they're in service. Joel Dry, Nine News. To political reporter Patrick Condren, and the Premier's been briefed, Pat, on the much-anticipated Queensland Rail report. Uh, she sure has, shortly after returning from her week governing in central Queensland. Anastasia Palaszczuk met with report author Philip Strawn. He was asked to look into the culture of QR after that series of so-called rail fails that left thousands of commuters stranded. The entire affair has put significant political pressure onto the Labor government with repeated calls for the Transport Minister Sterling Hinchliffe to be sacked for his poor handling of the crisis. I want a clear path forward. I want to make sure that we never see what had happened in the past happen again. And I want to get to the bottom of it, frankly. All will be revealed on Monday after Cabinet has considered the report and plotted the government's response going forward. Queensland's Crime and Corruption Commission has helped break open some of the state's biggest cases in recent years. Its secretive coercive hearings have forced witnesses to give up vital information, but some critics say the powers are being overused and go too far. This is one of Queensland's most secretive rooms. Those called to testify in the so-called Star Chamber have no right to silence. If they refuse to cooperate or lie, they can be jailed. They're a, uh, a very powerful tool we use, but we take very seriously uh, the use of them and we have to convince ourselves that there is a proper basis to use the powers. Evidence from Triple C hearings helped convict two men over the McCulkin murders, a crime that had been unsolved since the 70s. In the Tiali Palmer case, the Triple C trapped her foster family in a lie. Eventually, they gave up the killer, foster father Rick Thorburn. But while there's widespread support for the Star Chamber's use in major investigations, there's also concern the right to silence is being taken away in low-level cases. There has to be some balance, a balance between police powers, triple C powers on the one hand and civil liberties on the other. Over a decade, the number of investigative hearings have quadrupled to more than 340 a year. In 2017, Brisbane YouTuber Paul Pluter leaked top-secret documents detailing problems with Queensland rail timetables and trains. New Gen is a huge up. It's understood he was summoned to the Star Chamber and forced to reveal his source. He's since been charged with allegedly revealing he was called to face a hearing. 
It'd be different if you were talking about a terrorist incident, but this was talking about problems within Queensland Rail that needed in the public interest to be disclosed. People who have access to confidential information are under an obligation of trust not to disclose that without very good reason. If there's, for instance, a uh, belief that they're a, uh, they want to blow the whistle, as it were, they should come to us confidentially. The Triple C doesn't release transcripts or recordings of its coercive hearings. In many cases, even telling someone you've been summoned to testify can be an offence. Civil libertarians want the powers reined in, but the Triple C insists it's kept in check by the courts and a parliamentary oversight committee. Christian Silver, ABC News. Yeah.